Hi everyone, welcome to Coffee Table Talks. Mmm, that's refreshing. I'm Pastor John Bell, and today I'd like to talk to you about what is a human. Have you ever thought about what it means to be a human being and the implications that are found in the understanding of our origin and our purpose and our destiny, really? That's what I want to talk to you about today. I want to read to you from the book of Psalms, chapter 8, verses 3 through 5. This is David saying, When I consider your heavens and the work of your fingers, the moons and the stars which you have ordained. So David was looking at creation. He was looking at the uh, immensity of of creation he was looking at the vastness and also the detail and as he's looking at that it's making him feel small it's making him wonder how God would even care or be concerned with him and so as he's looking at that he says in verse 4 he says what is man that you're mindful of him the son of man that you visit him for you have and this is the key word you have made him a little lower than the angels, and you have crowned him with glory and honor. And so from that, we see as David is reasoning and uh, trying to uh, understand his, his life, his existence in relationship to everything that's going on, and he's realizing that God made him, and that God has crowned him with glory and honor, that he is a, has a special place in God's creation so much so that he is uh, in the order of creation a little lower than angels and then if I turn to Psalm 139 verse 13 it says 13 and 14 it says um, again a psalm of David it says for you have formed my inner parts and covered me in my mother's womb I will praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made so David, this was a thing that he, he thought about often, about who he was and about his very humanness, and he's relating that to his surroundings. And as he's thinking about God and his existence, he's saying that God himself, as a master craftsman, in his mother's womb, was making him, was using his hands, his knowledge, he was organizing him, he was breathing life into him and doing all of these amazing things. And then in Proverbs 20, verse 12, it says, The hearing ear and the seeing eye, the Lord has made them both. So as we bring those all together, it just points back to the original creation story, Genesis chapter 1, verses 26 and 27, where God has made man in his image. So what does that mean? I want to talk to you about the implications of that. Four things. Number one, what is a human being? Number one, human being is created. He is not a random act of events that have over time coordinated, coordinated and organized to have this sort of machine with no meaning, no purpose, uh, no reason for existence. Instead, the Bible, and by the way, the only way we can know is what the Bible tells us. We can't know our origin other than what God has told us about our origin. And so as we understand our origin, we understand we were created. So the implications of that is that, like a painting, so to speak, uh, our worth is in relationship to the one who created us. So as a human being, in, in that psalm that we read in Psalm uh, 8, verses 3, for four, uh, 3 through 5, it says that God crowned us with glory and honor. So our existence is to be an existence that is connected to our Creator. Now, to disconnect, which we really can't do, but we think that we can by... Ignoring God, discounting God, um, ignoring the very things that speak about our existence is to be in a relationship with God. When we do that, what we're doing is basically is called humanism. We're starting with ourselves. We're making ourselves our own God. And 
as Paul said in Colossians uh, 2.8, he said, don't be deceived by philosophies and um, empty deceptions of the world that take us sort of captive. Um, and that's what happens when we uh, disconnect our existence from our Creator and try to be an autom autonomous being and philosophy and history throughout the world that is... Um, wanted to prove man's existence without a creator has continually fallen short and ultimately humanism ends in uh, hopelessness and fatalism there's no hope no reason we're just machines here uh, no rationale for morals right wrong or anything like that so point number one to know that we are created like a painting that is has its worth and significance because of its painter. So a Rembrandt, um, the famous painters, you know, that that these paintings have their worth because of their creator. And the greater the artist and his ability, the greater the worth of the painting. So that's the same with human beings. So first, to recognize we are being, being created, God handcrafted us, he made us as the ultimate supreme being in the universe. So point number two, not only are we created, but that we are created in his image. So what does that tell us? To be created in God's image means that we are created in a way where we have similar attributes to God. So we have similarities to God. Now, why is that important? It's important because we are created to be in relationship with God. And then in order to be in relationship with God, we need to walk in the similarities that God created us to him in. So uh, God's created us with intellect, with reason abilities. He's created us with uh, compassion. He's, uh, he's um, created us with emotions and feelings. He's created us with dignity. And as we saw in the, prop, in the Psalm 8, he's created us with honor and, um, and glory. And so, first of all, we see there, that there's a leveling of the playing field for all human beings that all human beings are created equal. We're, we're all created in the image of God, and there's no greater human being or lesser human being. We are all created in God's image as his creation, as image bearers of God. Now, that's important. So now, now how do we live? That's the significance. How do we live as creations of God? We live according to the attributes of God that he shared with us. Now, one of the most important things is to know that one of those, another one of those attributes is he's created us with moral, M-O-R-A-L, faculties and abilities. So one of the distinctive characteristics of, of human beings is we have a, a, an innate sense of right and wrong. And so our innate sense of right and wrong should show us our connection to our creator who is a, a moral God. Um, so that leads us to point number three, is that as human beings, not only are we created, then we're created in God, God's image, but we're, we're also fallen. Our nature is fallen, and this is why it's so difficult to experience the fullness of our created existence as image bearers of God, because sin entered through one man. Romans 5.12 says, through one man. Sin entered the world and death through sin and thus spread to all men in other words it's our fallen nature that keeps us from experiencing the fullness of our created being and that brings me to my last point is that uh, for all human beings we have the opportunity for redemption in christ and that redemption based on christ's work not our work based based on his Forgiveness according to the blood that was shed, that now brings man back into that relationship that he was created to have and gives man the ability to walk in those attributes that bring about the fullness of a human being's created nature. So, as we look at this uh, incredible design of human nature, we have to uh, just appreciate God come back to the cross, receive forgiveness in Christ, and then walk in the newness of life, which is in fellowship with the almighty created being, 
God himself. So God bless you guys. I hope that helps. And uh, we'll see you next time.